let's uh, start uh, this webinar and uh, let me say again uh, welcome everybody uh, this is our last international webinar for this year and uh, uh, we would hope that uh, you will enjoy it and uh, today we will discuss about um, concrete structures and uh, some particular design aspects and um, <clears throat> Uh, my name is uh, Tsiba Ciprian. I am the sales manager for Baltic, uh, Romania, Romania and the rest of the world. And uh, today I'm going to be uh, hosting together with uh, my colleague uh, Shahu, uh, who is a market uh, development and technical specialist for Sweden. Uh, a few topics that uh, we will cover today. Uh, we will focus on uh, creating and uh, designing an industrial building. Uh, we'll be focusing on um, uh, column and beam design, concealed bar, uh, crack section analysis. Uh, and then uh, uh, in the second part, uh, my colleague uh, Shahu will uh, uh, present to you a bridge uh made in uh, with the help of uh, uh grasshopper uh it has a really interesting shape and uh yeah it, he will talk about the uh, settlement uh soil structure interaction and uh but i leave i will leave him to to uh tell you more about that um now just a few a brief introduction for the uh people that uh, are new to uh, strusoft uh, Strusoft uh, is a company based in uh, Sweden, where we have uh, our head office. Uh, we have offices all across Europe, in Finland, Estonia, Lithuania, uh, Philippines, uh, India, Romania, Hungary, Belgium, Netherlands, and uh, UK and Denmark. Um, our um, uh, software uh, is not just fan design. We also have uh, uh, pre-stressed uh, uh, element uh, design software. Uh, we have uh, uh, quick uh, uh, tools for calculations. We have uh, uh, beam software uh, that uh, is made uh, tailor-made for the brickest industry. Uh, so please visit our website and uh, feel free to to explore uh, more. Uh, now that the introduction uh, has been uh, made, maybe let's jump uh, directly to uh, the models in FEM Design. So um, I prepared an, uh, an industrial uh, building quickly. Just note that uh, everything that you see here is made uh, academically and solely for, uh, uh, you know, this webinar purpose. It's not like uh, designed to be, uh, yeah, built. <laughs> so uh, I, I prepared um, an industrial building for you guys uh, with a mobile crane and um, yeah, this is how it looks. Basically, the mobile crane and the reason why I did the mobile crane was because uh, uh, I wanted to use uh, the corbel function and uh, uh, to show you the advantages and how quickly it is to, to uh, design something with the corbel without the need of making, you know, rigid links or, or uh, other stuff like that. And uh, uh, also to see a little bit uh, how an industrial building uh, looks like. Of course, this is a basic model, you know, uh, like main beams, secondary beams, uh, columns, and uh, intermediate uh, story made out of hollow core slabs. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Uh, basically, after uh, uh, you designed uh, this, uh, this building, like the geometry, uh, if you go into the analysis and uh, you calculate it, you can afterwards, of course, uh, go and uh, calculate, uh, which we will do, the uh, beams and columns. And uh, 
afterwards, uh, yeah, we will go make a simple model uh, to show you how the uh, concealed bar uh, can be used. And uh, then we will take a short dive into a little bit of theory between linear and non-linear analysis and uh, how to use the crack section uh, uh, analysis. And of course, why is it important? I forgot to mention uh, because I hide the covers. So uh, uh, for this building, I also generated uh, uh, automatically the wind load um, by creating uh, covers, uh, both on uh, the roof and uh, on the vertical uh, side of the building. And uh, yeah, now I'm uh, basically calculating the structure and then we will go into the uh, design. It's going to take longer, maybe. I will switch to a simple model. Let's see. Going to wait a few more minutes. Great. Now we have our efforts and we can go into the uh, RC design. And in the RC design, I can uh, see that I already have them uh, uh, calculated, right? So uh, I can maybe manual design something, I don't know, secondary beam maybe. So here I can, uh, you know, look it in a, in a 3D uh, and yeah, modify it if I feel the need to. If not, I'm gonna just leave it like this. If I want to see the detailed result, I click the magnifying glass. Let's do that. Probably, yeah, it hasn't been calculated, sorry. It was done. Reinforcement that I left from uh, the other model. While it's calculating, let me quickly jump to more simplistic uh, model. So here I have a column, basically the same column that I used uh, uh, in uh, the industrial building. And I placed uh, two concentrated loads. One, if I remember correctly, it's 100, and the other one is uh, uh, 200. And um, I did uh, uh, analysis uh, for it just to show you the difference. Uh, of course, it uh, uh, bends in this direction. Uh, and this is because I used the Corbel function. If I didn't use the Corbel function and uh, all the loads would have been uh, uh, central, of course, this effect would have not happened. That's why we recommend the usage of this uh, uh, Corbel function. Now, of course, we can go a step further and uh, talk a little bit about uh, uh, the second order analysis. Uh, but before we do that, uh, I would like to uh, maybe go back to our model. Uh, still not finished. All right. Maybe open up a paint and uh, talk a little bit meanwhile um, about uh, the uh, difference between uh, linear and uh, nonlinear uh, calculation. So if we start from a simple 
stress strain diagram. And uh, we consider a behavior like this. We can say that up to this point, we have a linear elastic behavior. And uh, after this point, we basically have a nonlinear uh, behavior. So the difference between linear and nonlinear is, of course, uh, mainly in in, uh, in the displacement. You will see it. Sorry. Don't say so. If I have a force displacement diagram, a linear behavior would be something like this, and the nonlinear behavior would be something like this. So for a given force, right, this will be the displacement if I use a, a linear. Uh, calculus and this will be the displacement if I use a nonlinear. Now, of course, in about most of the design practices, uh, the difference is uh, uh, negligible. But there are some cases because of the safety factors and the uncracked state uh, of the design, and so on and so forth. But there can be the case where we can register a very big difference between linear and nonlinear calculation, and uh, then it's mandatory to, to uh, do a nonlinear uh, uh, calculus in order to find out uh, the more realistic behavior. Now, probably you are asking, uh, uh, all right, but uh, how does this uh, nonlinear uh, uh, curve uh, is being you know calculated. But basically, if we take this force and we divide it into smaller increments, uh, and for each increment, basically we do. Oops, don't know what happened there. Uh, let's assume that this is x value, and uh, we go with 0 0.1 uh, uh, x increments. So we take uh, 10. Uh, uh, yeah increments. So in that case, if I calculate it here, I would say that it has one particular stiffness, and then it cracks. And then I recalculate the stiffness, and I calculate the next region, and so on and so forth. So basically, from points, I can derive the shape of uh, uh, my diagram, uh, and this is how uh, uh, it is it is made. Now, we will talk about the crack section analysis, and uh, FEM design uh, modifies the stiffness in the perpendicular direction to the crack, uh, and uh, along the crack, uh, the the stiffness will remain uh, unchanged. So. This was a little bit uh, the theory behind it. And uh, let's see now if uh, our model. Uh, yeah. OK, as I said, I didn't design it properly, as you can see. I just played with the model. Uh, so uh, now, of course, I can go into the detailed results. and. Uh, uh, you know, I can see the reinforcement arrangement. Uh, uh, I can see uh, the stress strain uh, diagram. Basically, all the input and the result data, uh, you know, the, the compressed and uh, uh, tensed regions. And this can be, of course, uh, uh, added. Uh, to our documentation, if we, uh, we would like to, to print it uh, at the end. So, uh, 
Yes, this was uh, a little bit like a, an overview of uh, industrial building and uh, a model of how it should look like. Uh, and now I'm going to jump to another model. Uh, maybe, yeah, let's do something new. Oh, I don't want to save it. So let's just quickly design a plate. Let's say six by six. And we place some uh, line supports. And then let's define two loads. One permanent and one live. Make a quick combination. All right, now let's define the loads. As you can see here, in uh, the first uh, part of our analysis. I will not click the cracked section analysis just in the second part after uh, I have my reinforcement uh, design. So let's perform a linear calculation. This is probably a little bit of uh, an overkill, as we will see, but uh, yeah, it's academic model. Uh, so if I go to RC design again, I calculate it and I say design. Now has designed my, uh, my reinforcement and uh, if I want to, for example, check the uh, displacements, right? I see that I have a displacement of uh, four in the linear. As I said, this is uh, an overkill model. Uh, and now I recalculate it, but I click the crack section. Basically, what happens here is exactly what is explained in our uh, wiki. Uh, it takes uh, uh, increment between the uh, initial crack and the final cracking state. And then uh, uh, it will uh, uh, merge our current state. So you see now I have 19, so the difference is huge. And if I want to uh, see the cracks, I can easily do this. This is my cracking pattern as it looks like. So um, thank you very much, uh, everybody. This was uh, all from my side. Uh, actually, before I, I pass it to Shahu, I forgot uh, uh, one additional model about uh, the concealed bar. And it's good that I remembered. 
so for the concealed bar, uh, basically we can design part of a wall above uh, a window or a door opening uh, as uh, uh, a beam. So the way we do this is quite uh, uh, easy. Let's take a wall like this. And then we cut the door opening. Let's place a line support. Define the load. Right. And then like this be really, really simple. And uh, we calculate it. Now, if I go again to the RC design tab and I uh, select the concealed bar, let's draw a line before so it will help me define it. Specify the concealed bar. It's in this wall. In this region, I want it to be designed as beam. And now, I calculated, design, hit the design calculation, and um, let's see what happened. So as you can see, it was designed as a beam, <clears throat> so no longer as a part of a wall. Uh, of course, it is a part of a wall, but the design is different. Yeah. So thank you very much. Uh, now I'm really finished. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and uh, I didn't waste uh, too much of your precious time. Uh, I want to say uh, Merry Christmas to everybody and uh, a Happy New Year. Goodbye. And thanks a lot, Cyprian. <clears throat> there was just a small question from the audience. I think you can show it immediately before sharing the screen. And uh, it was about the concrete corbel function, just how you entered it. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, sure. Let me let me just uh, show you really fast. So the way you do it is uh, if I take one column, for example, and here uh, you have the column corbel. Here you have the definition of the corbel. So you know all the geometrical data sections, material, <clears throat> and condition, etc. So you just have to, to uh, define all this input data. And uh, afterwards, you just connect it to the top or to whatever the position is uh, uh, across the length of the column. And uh, there you have it. Yeah. All right. Uh, Let's see if whether I, I know how to change the presenter. Uh, Shahu, maybe you can try to share your screen. Yeah, and, sure, uh, I'll give it a try. See if whether the people uh, see your screen. I think you need to, let's see. Okay, thanks a lot, Cyprian. It's, it's nice to see that paint and fan design can be used for nonlinear 
theory explanation. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Okay, so I think I'm sharing my screen. Let's just see. Yes, you are. Okay, perfect. And the audio is good? Yes, you are good to go. Perfect. Okay, so like Cyprian said, Shahu Rouhani, uh, working from the Swedish market. Uh, have been previously working as a bridge and civil engineer as a consultant and been working at Struesoft for a bit more than a year now. Uh, I will go through concrete structures as well, but more related to bridges and uh, in particular some uh, the foundations of them, um, shallow foundations in fact. And I'll show some examples, uh, some very theoretical and some more advanced and complicated. But before I start, I I browsed through the, the Eurocode 7 yesterday and I and I saw that soil structure interaction was mentioned not only briefly, but actually just once. Uh, but what we can say is that approximate hand calculations for, for designing your foundations can be sufficient, but the best possible prediction for the for the ground pressure is to have a soil structure interaction in your in your model, which is as it is. Uh, explained the soil and the structure interacting together and there are some different foundation types the pad foundation strip foundation and the raft foundation and the two we will look at today more uh, reminds us about the pad and the strip foundation so the first example is very theoretical but i think it's it's super interesting and um, it is a continuous beam with two different options of the boundary condition so the the supports are either rigid or flexible and what we can see is that we get a very different bending moment distribution of, uh, of this uh, which tells us that actually the foundation doesn't only transmit the load but it also affects the stress state so i'll, I'll open this, uh, this this first example in fm design we can look at the differences So what I have is a fictitious bar. So I just defined an arbitrary section. And uh, it has a span length of 10 meter in each span. And what varies is the stiffness of the boundary conditions. So if you look at these three, you have the default value for rigid. And if we look at the bottom three, we have a quite low vertical stiffness but this is the only thing that differs and then i've applied the same loading which is 10 kilonewton per meter and then i run the analysis so this is probably self explanatory for a lot of people but i think it's still a very nice and theoretical example on on how the the boundary condition affects the stress state of the structure and uh, what we can see is that we have a we have basically the same displacement in all the points here which gives us this effect and uh, so from the classical bending moment distribution from the the first structural mechanics course you guys took to something that looks quite odd to some people. Okay, so jumping on to the next example, um, shallow foundations, and um, what we can say about them is that in theory we have um, very high stresses towards edges and uh, particularly in, in corners. And to capture this behavior you need some kind of um, volumetric model of the, of the soil uh, but what I will show today is uh, an auxiliary calculation, uh, which is a, it's an approximate calculation of the stiffness in particular points, and this is done in FEM design by making a, a background calculation with the 3D soil and then approximating the stiffnesses. Uh, so I'll show both of the models. Let's start with the 3D soil.
So here I've defined a soil strata. Some material material parameters. Then I have the foundation slab. With the thickness and some material properties. And then I've applied a load of 20 kilopascal on this structure. Of course, I need to mesh it. And then I run the analysis. I won't run the analysis for this one because I think it will take not too long time, but still, I don't think it's needed. And what I want to show is the connection forces in this Z direction. which means that here we get the effect of high stresses towards the corner and an increase towards the edges. And this will give us a bending moment distribution in the plate. Let's look at, look at the MX and the MY. And if we would have assumed a constant surface support, we wouldn't be getting any any internal forces in this in this foundation. Uh, there is an alternative model with the auxiliary bedding modulus calculation, and uh, the one difference the user need to make here is that we still need to define the soil strata. In the same manner, then, however, we need to enter the settings, the calculation, the soil calculation tab, and we need to deactivate the soil calculation box. So we don't want to calculate the soil as soil element. Also, we need to define some stiffness points. So I will remove the stiffness points. Enter the surface support group and I delete the ones I've already defined. Then I define new stiffness points to 0 0.2, let's do 0 0.1. Won't cost us anything. And similarly, I have a foundation slab with a thickness and a material property. I apply a, a uniformly distributed load, but here I need to create a load combination as well because the auxiliary bedding modulus calculation will be done for one of the load combinations. So when I enter the calculation options, I need to tick the auxiliary calculations and I enter the bedding modulus calculation. And I do this for a characteristic load combination. And I use a stiffness multiplier, which is a multiplier for the in-plane stiffness uh, related to the, to the vertical stiffness. And here I do 50%. So this will give us a stiffness variation in the plate or in the support points such that we will have the highest stiffness in the corners and an increase towards the edges. When I run the load combination, Let's look at the reactions.
I have the nice shape that I want. Increase towards edges and corners. And this will give us the distribution of MX. Let's look at the color palette and MY due to the, the shape of the ground pressure. I have a less realistic model. I could just show it very fast. It's always good to see how you shouldn't do. And so here we have the, the surface support. I have a constant surface support. In, uh, so the stiffness is the same in all points. I have a foundation slab just, just as before. And I apply the load. And probably self-explanatory, but this will not give us any bending moments. We get a constant ground pressure distribution, more or less a rigid body motion, and no internal stresses. Okay, so the, the last example, I will show, I think, three or four models, but let me just browse through what I will do. So, first, I will show how I created the geometry of of a curved and twisted bridge in Femme Design. Uh, I've been using the, the Rhino and the Grasshopper uh, softwares together with the Femme Design API. Then I'll show the normal force distribution of this structure in the columns. And we will see how it, it varies based on different, uh, different models. So one where we have the 3D soil, one where we have the auxiliary bedding modulus calculation and one where we have fixed support. So let's start with uh, with how we, we got the geometry in Femme Design. So we have a, a model in Rhino, could be any bridge, and we have used the center line of the bridge as a reference in, in Grasshopper to create the geometry. So the red surfaces and lines are the Grasshopper uh, features. And we have made it a bit parametric. So for example, we can vary the, the width of the bridge. So let's make it a bit wider. And what we get is actually also an increase in, in the columns. And it can also vary the distance between the pylons. So let's choose 25 meters. And here we have a different ratio for the first span versus the, the intermediate spans. And then there are a lot of functions being, being called and used. I won't go through them all, uh, but I will open the model in FM Design. And there are some important aspects to, to consider when working with this. And one thing is the local system of the sheds. Because what we do in, in Grasshopper and Rhino is that we create a discretized mesh, but not the finite element mesh Fem Design is using. However, we are working with triangles, meaning all the surfaces are plain, which is good. Let's just visualize the local system. So the local system of the shell is following the center line. And this was, will be very good when we are interpreting internal forces in the plate and using it for the design later on. OK, so I've been doing some modification and making the models a bit more, more advanced. So I will. 
I will show the continuing of my work. So the more or less the same geometry. I've added the foundation slabs and abutments, coupling them to the bridge deck with point connections. Uh, so as before, defining a soil strata, defining the foundation slabs. Let's see if we activate the thicknesses. Uh, I've only applied a dead load and we will be able to see the distribution of the normal forces in this, in this bridge. Also quite important here to, to have a, an appropriate mesh. I will not run this analysis, could take some time, uh, but let's just look at the translational displacements. So here we can see that the foundation slabs are influencing each other. And uh, we have this fun shape of the soil because we are locally applying pressure to it. And uh, this will cause effects in the foundation slab. And as I showed in the, the, the second example, there will be a, a distribution of the vertical ground pressure. Let's look at them. So here we have them. This is the abutment and this is the intermediate column spans. So uh, an increase towards the edges and corners, which will give us uh, internal forces in the, in the foundation. And there is another way to do this, of course, with the auxiliary bedding modulus calculation. So the same model, but deactivating the, the function to calculate it as a solid element defining the stiffness point as shown previously and then defining a, a load combination. We run the auxiliary bedding modulus calculation. Let's look at the KZ in compression. And we have a variation over the over the foundation slab. Then we apply this to the load combination. And let's see if we get a good approximation of the of the ground pressure.
So similar to 3D soil, we get this distribution. And when looking at the normal forces in the columns, let's look at the highest value, 1992. And in this model, we have eighteen sixty six. Now we will look at the final model where we have fixed the boundary conditions of the the columns, and uh, it's quite interesting to just see how the extreme looks. So the same model, no foundation slab or abutment, just point support groups that are fixed with rigid values. And we run the analysis. I won't be able, uh, I won't do it now. We will just look at the normal force. Which actually was the one that was already visible, but I just did it again. And it's 2,24.59. And when we compare some numbers, we can see that we have more or less an increase of 25% in the compression force when having a fixed base, rigid values versus a, a, soft, a soft soil. And uh, going back to what I said in the beginning is that it, it is important to know that this is an this is an effect that that is real and that foundation doesn't only transmit loads but they also affect the stress state of structures and um, and it's very important to to take into account in, in the design workflow yeah. and that was actually it for me and uh, I would also like to say thank you guys for for joining us and listening and if you have any questions or if you are interested to to try out the software you can get in touch with either me or Cyprian, and uh, we'll try to help you guys get started or answering any particular questions you have.